Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. In the last class, we have discussed that drying phenomena in the constant rate and falling rate period. Uh, in the constant rate, we have discussed that uh, when only the convective heat transfer uh, will be uh, creating the driving force for mass transfer from the product, then what will be the drying rate and also we have seen that when all the three modes that is conduction, convection and radiation exist in a case, then how we can calculate the uh, phenomena in the in the constant rate drying period. Also we have seen that different kind of mechanism in the falling rate drying, uh, when the uh, drying when the drying rate in the falling rate period will be linearly proportional to the free moisture available and also when the uh, drying rate will not be linear that means the uh, drying will basically governed by the diffusion mechanism. So, then also how we can calculate the drying time uh, we have seen that. Now, today we will start a problem that is based on the principle that we have uh, derived in the in the last class we have uh, discussed uh, in that based on the uh, drying time calculation using the effective diffusivity and then we will uh, move on to the other topics. So, let us see first the problem on drying time calculation average diffusion coefficient um, of moisture in a product is 3 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square per hour. Product is dried from 29 percent dry basis to 9 percent dry basis. Product which is a slab of 25 mm thick is dried from both the side by hot air. Calculate the time required for drying. Given that equilibrium moisture content of the product is 4 percent. Now, we need to uh, find the solution of that. We have discussed that characteristic dimension uh, in this case that we need to use will be half of a thickness if the drying takes place from both the side. So, here uh, we will consider A that is the half thickness of uh, 25 mm. So, that is 12.5 or 0 0.0125 meter right. Then we need to calculate the free moisture available. So, initially when the moisture content was 29 percent dry basis and EMC is 4 percent. So, free moisture available will be 0 0.29 minus 0 0.04. So, 0 0.25 and at the end of the drying phenomena because we need to dry it till 9 percent dry basis. So, 0 0.09 minus 0 0.04 we are getting 0 0.05. Then we need to apply this equation T f we need to find A we know diffusivity uh, value is given effective diffusivity or average diffusion coefficient of moisture that is 3 into 10 power minus 6 meter square per hour and this x 1 x 2 we have calculated now. So, putting all that values here we are getting that T f will come 29.52 r. So, this is how uh, based on effective uh, diffusion coefficient or average diffusion coefficient we can calculate this one ok and, uh, calculate the time record in the falling rate period. So, we call it an average diffusion because in every instant and in the every uh, you know uh, place of the product this diffusion the rate of diffusion is not constant because there are many factors the uh, the structure of the cell the the porosity the shrinkage what happen in the product the non uniform distribution of the moisture and and there is many mechanism uh, may prevail not only uh, the liquid diffusion always. So, together to simplify the, the equation we consider this as a effective diffusion. So, then uh, we will see the mass and energy balance for continuous dryer. So, if you see the configuration it is like a drying chamber is there where the feed with a rate of f kg per hour temperature T 1 and moisture content x 1 is entering and the inlet air 
which is the supposed to be a hot air with uh, lesser humidity is entering uh, with a mass flow rate m a uh, kg per hour. Okay. And because of this interaction of this feed and the air, the product is coming out at a, at a rate p uh, with T 2 temperature and x 2 uh, is a moisture content and the inlet air is leaving with a temperature T a 1 and uh, mass will be same and humidity W 2 will increase. And also there may be heat loss to the ambient because it is not an insulated system. So, maybe some heat loss to the surrounding may happen there. Okay. So, M A is the mass flow rate of the air in kg per hour F P and uh, M D that is the okay, mass flow rate of the feed and, and the product that we have uh, taken here. So, here we do not don't need uh, okay. so, T 1, T 2, T A 1 and T A 2 these are the temperature of the feed product inlet and exit air and W 1 and W 2 is the humidity of the inlet and exit air whereas, X 1 and X 2 moisture content of feed and product in the dry basis. Okay. So, it is uh, given in the fraction. Now, we need to see the equation of the mass balance. So, mass balance will be what is coming in, in, in the drying system and what is going out. So, simply we can uh, perform like that if M D is the uh, you know uh, M D is the food that has been entered the rate of the, the food material that has been entered or the feed we can take it as F as well that into x 1 which is the moisture content plus m a which is the uh, flow rate of the of the air which has entered in kg per hour into humidity of that air that is kg water per kg dry air. That will be equal to the product which is leaving with the moisture content x 2. So, it is p into x 2 or m d into x 2 if we take m d as the uh, flow rate of the product in kg per hour plus m a that is the same air which is leaving into W 2. So, if there is no heat loss then the energy balance will be enthalpy of the inlet uh, feed plus enthalpy of the air that equal to uh, the enthalpy or heat content in the dried product plus the enthalpy in the air. So, we know already that using the psychrometric chart we can calculate the enthalpy of the air stream provided the two property of the air stream is known to us and in, in this particular case we know the temperature and humidity specific humidity. So, utilizing that we can calculate the uh, enthalpy at, at the two point and also uh, we can calculate in this manner uh, as the H 1 and H 2 which is the enthalpy of the feed and enthalpy of the product. So, if we take the reference temperature as 0. So, uh, C P D which is the specific heat of the dry material into T 1 minus 0. So, T 1 was the entry temperature 0 is the reference here plus C P W that is the specific heat of the moisture that is present in the food into moisture content x 1 into T 1 minus 0. Similarly, for T 2 we can uh, similarly, for H 2 that is the enthalpy of the product we can calculate. Also for the air we can calculate C A 1 into T A 1 minus 0 plus the moisture present in it into uh, lambda 0 latent heat of vaporization and for H 2 C A 2 into T A 2 minus 0 plus W 2 that is the humidity of the air outgoing air into latent heat of vaporization. Now, we know that humid heat of the air is 1.005 plus 1.88 W which is humidity. So, by this we can calculate all the uh, properties okay. and then we can use this to identify the mass balance and energy balance in case of a continuous dryer system. So, uh, let us take a small problem on that. If we consider a continuous dryer used to dry 450 kg dry solid per hour containing 
0 0.05 kg moisture per kg dry solid. Okay. So, continuous dryer is used uh, to dry which is having initial moisture content of this much 0 0.05 kg moisture per kg dry solid to 0 0.02 kg moisture per kg dry solid. Solids entering uh, at 25 degree Celsius and leaves at 60 degree Celsius. Okay. Hot air having humidity of 0 0.01 kg H 2 per kg dry air enters at 94 degree Celsius and leaves at 40 degree Celsius. So, take C P D that is uh, the specific heat of the dry material that is 1.5 kilo joule per kg lambda 0 is 2501 and calculate the mass flow rate of air. Okay. So, what is the uh, amount of air that is required to flow per unit time? so that this much uh, drying effect can be achieved. So, first we will do the mass balance that means 450 kg was dry solid per hour into 0 0.05 kg moisture per kg dry solid. So, this was this was the moisture amount of the moisture 450 into 0 0.05 plus 0 0.01 which is the humidity of the air and Ma is the mass flow rate that we need to calculate that will be equal to 450 into 0 0.02 plus M A into W 2. So, one relation between M A and W 2 we have uh, created here. Okay. Now, the energy balance would be H 1 first that is the hum, uh, that is the enthalpy of the inlet feed. So, C P D T 1 minus 0 plus C P W X 1 T 1 minus 0. So, 1.5 into 1.5 into 25 okay. this is the temperature at which it enters plus C P W that is 4.187 kilo joule per kg into 0 0.05 this is the moisture available into 25 that is the temperature difference. So, we are getting 42.73 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, this is the enthalpy of the inlet feed. Similarly, we can calculate H 2 which is coming 95.06 here we need to take the temperature 60 and the reference will be 0. Now, for the air we need to calculate that is uh, humid heat 1.005 plus 1.88 into humidity 0 0.01 into temperature drop uh, 94 minus 0 plus latent heat of vaporization 2501 into 0 0.01. So, we are getting 121.24 kilo joule per kg. Similarly, we need to calculate the enthalpy of the outgoing stream. So, W 2 will be um, factor that is changing. So, in terms of W 2 we are getting this relation. So, now putting uh, the, the energy balance equation all the values uh, in, into the energy balance equation. Here also we can get one relation between Ma and W 2. Now, solving these two relation uh, we can get the values of W 2 which is the humidity of the exit air and also the mass flow rate of the air required. So, W 2 is coming 0 0.02279 kg H 2 O per kg dry air and mass flow rate is coming 1054.7 kg per hour. Now, uh, just we uh, look into uh, the different kind of uh, you know dryer different types of dryer and uh, we would not discuss in much detail, but just we will see that what are the different mechanism available and what are the different drying uh, methods available. So, basically uh, conduction convection and radiation these three are the modes based on we can uh, you know dry the material. So, conduction drying that is drum dryer and rotary dryer these two are exclusively work on the principle of conduction heat transfer. If we uh, look into the convection heat transfer this is the most common method for, uh, normally used for the drying mechanism because the, the cabinet dryer which is also called the tray dryer that is most commonly used also we can use the tunnel dryer, spray dryer, spouted bed dryer and fluidized bed dryer. So, uh, this different configuration and different geometry has been developed for ease of handling of the product and also based on the 
quality uh, of the product uh, required quality and also the capacity of the product required. Then there is radiation drying like uh, sun drying which is you know continuing since ancient times and uh, this is very simple people just spread over the uh, you know clean cloth or or, uh, or the or the floor for uh, basically uh, grain drying this is used in, in some places. Solar dryer is one uh, radiative radiation drying based on the natural energy available okay. and the microwave drying which is also becoming very popular because of its uh, efficient drying operation. So, we will see uh, some of these dryers now. Okay. So, conduction drying which is contact drying, convective drying we have already uh, explained that how it has been done and uh, in maybe in the in the detail you might be uh, you know reading in your heat transfer classes. So, I am not going to uh, going into the detail of that. So, solar dryers no fuel or mechanical energy is required in this case drying cost is therefore, low as compared to the mechanical drying. But the problem is that uncontrolled and non-uniform drying because for the solar radiation there is no certainty of the intensity of the radiation to be uniform that is one problem. So, in a single day the variation is there uh, of the intensity of the solar radiation and also throughout the year there will be variation. And uh, there are effect of the wind velocity, dust and all that may not be controlled uh, properly. So, there is a problem of the solar drying of this uh, non-uniformity. There is also direct and indirect kind of mechanism. So, uh, so, one uh, one case is that in the in the direct type uh, mechanism. So, sunlight is fall on a glass okay, and the cold air which is uh, which is passing through the product will getting heated by this radiative effect of the uh, solar radiation and the product will be getting dried. Okay. So, hot air is going out the product is getting the radiative heat as well and because of this uh, heated air also some effect uh, they might be uh, getting because of the convective heat transfer as well. So, there is an insulated casing is there so that no heat loss will be there whatever heat is coming by radiation will uh, be there in the in the chamber itself. Okay. Whereas, uh, if we see the other method. So, uh, which is kind of an uh, indirect drying. So, indirect in the sense first we utilize the solar radiation to heat the air and that air is again passed through the uh, you know green bed or the bed of the food material for drying by the convective mechanism. Okay. So, there is an uh, inlet and exhaust of the air and there are the drying shelves are there. So, hot air is uh, going to the going to the material and then this how this is how they dry the product. So, the most common dryer which is based on convective drying mechanism that is the cabinet dryer. So, it consists of a closed compartment in which the trays containing uh, product um, are, are kept and the trays rest on a shelf with adequate spacing between them. So, that the heated air can blow through or can pass through the food material and heated dry air circulate between the shelves. So, look into the uh, this cabinet dryer system one is the drying chamber this one this one is the drying chamber two is the drying trolley. So, this has been given the drying trolley is given where the where the trays are there okay, drying trays are there. There is a heat exchanger because whatever air the uh, air is coming through this duct there is a blower which is uh, you know taking the air from the from the ambient and it is it is pulling inside it is passing through the heat exchanger that heat exchanger is increasing the temperature of this uh, air the cool air or fresh air that is coming. So, the temperature is increasing and when this air is passing over the weight surface of the food its humidity is also increasing. Okay. So, at 4 there is a circulation fan which is uh, circulating the uh, air again 
6 is a control panel. So, by this we can control the temperature of the air stream, how much we need to heat it. Okay. Then what should be the uh, uh, you know flow rate of the of the air stream that also we can control by this. And there is a exhaust damper also. Now, in such kind of a mechanism there are so many design uh, you know parameters that we can change or the efficiency that we can uh, generate for that matter we can do some recirculation of the exit air because the exit air is having high humidity and inlet air is most of the time is very dry in this case. So, to keep the product quality better because when the product is exposed to very uh, very low hum uh, low humidity and high temperature environment. So, it may happen that the outer surface will shrink much higher rate. Okay. So, to, to control the quality of the material sometime we circulate the uh, exit air and mix it with the inlet air to some extent and then uh, we can operate the dryer. So, this kind of optimization we can perform based on the quality of the product. Another is the tunnel dryer. So, this is one kind of a continuous uh, drying method. It consists of a long tunnel through which trucks carrying the stack of tray can travel with or uh, against the uh, stream of the drying air. So, how the, the flow rate of the air will be there? I mean the direction of the uh, air can be controlled that that is again a design uh, issue that we can uh, always uh, work on to increase the efficiency. So, there is a tunnel dryer operate in co current, counter current or mixed current fashion as, as uh, I was telling that the flow of the material and flow of the air will have a similar direction or opposite direction or you know uh, perpendicular direction um, all this can happen and this is uh, a very efficient and uh, continuous system. So, it is it is being used in many food processing operation. So, uh, also uh, works on the convective mechanism. So, air is coming through and then passing through a heat exchanger and then it flows over the surface and then goes out of the exit duct. So, uh, just uh, some to some extent different than the tunnel dryer where the, the, the belt is operated inside a uh, tunnel in a belt dryer it can operate in the uh, in the open as well or it can uh, it can uh, operate in a in a closed chamber metal belt or conveyor heated by the contact or radiation by the hot element install on both the side so that we can use there's a uh, feeding pump which is in a control rate put the product on the weight product on the surface of the belt and there is a conveyor belt we can adjust the speed of the belt and as as long as it reaches the end of the belt the drying will complete. So, we need to design the length of the belt and width of the belt dimensions in such a way. So, that uh, so that by the time the product reaches to the uh, the other end the product will get dried and at the end we can calculate the dry uh, product there is a discharge role we have attached here. Uh, so, by that or any kind of discharge mechanism we can put. So, by that the control uh, rate of the product will come out and sometime if we want to you know break the material because if it kind of a uh, slurry or uh, material which has been uh, which have which need to be uh, you know fragmented then we can add a crusher roll at the end. So, that will crush it and uh, in a in a small bits form or powder form we can get the product out of the chamber. And if the product is heat sensitive we can perform this operation under vacuum as well. So, that the boiling point of the water will lower. So, at the let lesser uh, you know temperature lower temperature we can dry the product and the product quality of the heat sensitive material will retain. So, we just we need to add one vacuum pump here and then uh, we will run it for at the required level of the vacuum. Foam mat drying 
this is a method by which a liquid food concentrate along with a suitable foaming agent uh, and this is whipped to form a stable foam and is subjected to dehydration in the form of a mat or foam. Foaming agent we use glycerol monostriarate, egg albumin, groundnut protein isolate. So, rate of drying in this process is uh, comparatively very high because of an uh, enormous increase in the liquid gas interface because since we are creating foam. So, there is enough surface area available for the air to dry the material and the product quality is also very good in this case. Fluidized bed drying this uh, the product pieces are suspended in a heated area through throughout the time required for the drying. So, this arrangement is, is done basically to increase the uh, area of contact between the air and the product to, in, to be increased. So, that the product will be in a fluidized state and air should pass through all the pore spaces available uh, through the product and uh, by that the drying will be fast and uh, the quality of the product will also be good because it is not that from one side only it is getting the heat and the charring effect or the uh, heat induced damages happen in, in, uh, in the lower section and the upper section is quite good and the drying rate is very slow at the upper section. So, in those kind of phenomena we want to avoid this utilizing the fluidized bed drying and therefore, it, it results in uniform and rapid drying mechanism. It can be applied to particulate solid non sticky food with a particle size within the range of 0.05 to 10 mm depending on the density. So, from the bottom the hot gas hot flue gas is coming and then it is uh, a, a perforated a perforated tray is there on which the product is kept and through those perforation the hot air is coming ok and then uh, we can we can continuously fit the weight material from one side and the dry material we can take out from the other side. Puff drying this process is accomplished by exposing a relatively small piece of product to high pressure and high temperature for a short time and after which the product is moved to atmospheric pressure. So, the products produced by the puff drying have very high porosity with rapid rehydration characteristics. So, we are exposing it to high pressure and high temperature for a short time after which the product is moved to atmospheric pressure. So, uh, maybe because of this sudden release of the pressure there is a you know expansion in the volume may happen to the product and because of that lot many pores generated and the product quality is improved. Osmotic dehydration this is used for partial removal of the water from plant tissue by immersion in a hypertonic solution ok. So, that means, if the if the concentration of the solution in which we are dipping the uh, food material is is higher than the food. So, the moisture from the food will uh, go to the solution. So, this is uh, how the osmotic dehydration happens. High retention of the vitamin and minerals by this method because there is no change in the you know temperature level. So, we need not to expose the food to high temperature. So, that is why the vitamin and minerals and, and the color flavor taste all will retain uh, in the food and osmotic dehydration the solute used are generally sugar syrup with fruit slices or cubes and salt or brine with vegetable. This is done because there is a chance that while doing the uh, osmotic dehydration this is a two way transfer. So, as the moisture is moving out of the uh, you know out of the uh, food uh, material or the cell of the food to the uh, hypertonic solution. Similarly, the solute of that solution may enter into the food matrix. So, therefore, we need to use such products that if they come into the uh, in the in the product also the uh, product will be in, in good quality and condition and that is why there also one op, uh, you know one can think of doing optimization that how much uh, how much uh, you know transfer of salt or sugar in the product is allowable. So, these are some kind of uh, osmotically dehydrated uh, fruits and vegetable these are uh, available in the in the market also like for the uh, aula papaya, 
and some resins, pineapples, mango, all, all such uh, slices have been dried using the osmotic dehydration. So, the color and flavor uh, will be intact, little bit change in the salt and sugar concentration may happen. Rotary dryers, this is consists of a metal cylinder with inlet flights. So, the feed is entering from one end okay, and the product is uh, you know passing from the from the bottom side it will it will move along with the movement of the of this uh, rotary dryer to the other section and the air is also entered from the inlet section air flow will be utilized to dry the material and from the uh, at the end from the exhaust section the air is going out and the dried product will be collected. So, in the in this case the cylinder we kept slightly inclined. So, it will help in the better passage or flow of the product and uh, um, the material is fed in the high end discharge is at the low end. Hot air is blown in a co current or counter current direction we can provide this and there are flights to proper you know circulation of the of the product inside the um, inside the rotary dryer. So, drum dryer uh, in, in the drum drying what happens that the horizontal metal cylinder is heated by steam condensing inside right and the outside the layer of the dried product is getting deposited. So, as it is rotating as the drum is rotating the feed is here and feed is uh, you know it is strict to the wall of the drum and as it rotates and it the product is coming to the other end there is a knife attached at, at this end. So, that is scratching out all the material that has been stick to the surface and it is collected um, by uh, you know another uh, conveying system. Also here, here also after collecting that if you want we can grind those material if needed and all this heat transfer is by conduction mechanism as we have already mentioned that drum is uh, operating on a condu conduction heat transfer mechanism. So, all the steam is giving the heat that is conducted through the metal wall of the drum and coming to the product giving the required uh, uh, heat for the moisture evaporation and the material is get dried. So, temperature of the cylinder wall is generally 120 to 155 degree Celsius. Vacuum is applied to highly heat sensitive material so that uh, you know it can be dried at a lower temperature. Tomato puree, milk, skim milk, whey, uh, beef broth, yeast, coffee and malt extract all this thing can be dried by this mechanism. So, uh, in the in the drum dryer we can have single and double drum feeding method. So, roll feeding, knee feeding uh, or, or dipping method, spraying and splashing different kind of method may be there. So, we can see that uh, the, di the discharge mechanism here, the feed is here that we can uh, we can give by um, uh, on the surface of the product. So, here the two rolls are moving in opposite direction. Okay, so, these are the different arrangements, this is the dip method that we have just now discussed. So, here the those two are moving in, in, in the direction of uh, one another and in the dip method this is moving in opposite direction. So, any kind of uh, method can be there. Spray drying which is again very important drying mechanism in which Although we first partially concentrate the, uh, the liquid material liquid matrix and then we uh, enter into this and uh, in the spray dryer it is consists of a drying chamber atomizer through which very fine fine and minute particle of the liquid droplets we uh, develop and then it, it is uh, you know released in the in the chamber. There is a feed pump which control the liquid flow rate, uh, there is a cyclone se separator and also there is a Mm, you know system of air uh, spraying in here. So, heated air we pass through there is a twin screw kind of nozzle from one nozzle the 
the you know the the air stream is entering or release in the in the chamber and the other uh, the droplet are introduced in the chamber so here the inlet air temperature is 200 to 250 degrees celsius drying of the liquid food products is generally performed in spray drying because then that only we can make uh, atomize here production of the milk and whey powder coffee uh, creamers cheese powder instant coffee and tea that we can develop in the spray drying mechanism is done basically on the uh, on the um, principle of that adiabatic saturation and the condition in the drying chamber is such that the particle when released from the atomizer will uh, will be exposed to the uh, such heated air condition 200 to 250 degrees celsius and instantly getting dried so the moisture particle uh, will evaporated and moisture will evaporate and the and the particle will come to the uh, you know uh, downward so before hitting the wall it should be completely dry so that it won't stick to the wall and it will come to the bottom and through the cyclone separator it can be uh, collected and separated so uh, the drying is very fast here and therefore the heat sensitive material uh, is used in the in the spray drying uh, it is uh, one of the you know most most practice method in the uh, especially the uh, milk powder uh, drying industry or some some case uh, the you know the fruit uh, uh, fruit pulp powder also can be used but there is a problem that because of because those material develop a stickiness okay so uh, those material uh, cannot be handled very efficiently in in spray drying however we can go for other heat sensitive uh, drying methods where uh, you know the uh, drum drying or uh, vacuum drying where the heat sensitive material can be handled and at the at the end if if required we can uh, we can develop the different fine different fraction of the powder as for the requirement so uh, this is all about the uh, drying uh, technology uh, we will stop here and definitely we will take question if uh, uh, any one of you have any questions so we will definitely address them so thank you